Hello, my name is Amir. I'm pleased to say that I'm a dental surgeon and I'm here to talk to you. A budding dentist, a general dental practitioner perhaps, a dental therapist, or anyone for that matter, about the childhood fevers, the exanthematous fevers, the so-called acute specific fevers. Things like mumps and measles and German measles and diphtheria and chicken pox and whooping cough. And I put them all in here because in each case some sort of oral manifestation or facial presentation will be seen by us or will be picked up by us. And therefore you should know something about them. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about their incubation period. The prodromal symptoms, those are the symptoms that come on before the actual illness. Whether or not there is a rash, and what you would see in the mouth column, which is the most important thing for us. And whether or not they are protected by vaccine, vaccination program. So let's go very slowly through them. Mumps or epidemic parotitis is a viral illness and is spread by droplet infection, by sneezing and by coughing, by sneezing and coughing in school and on the bus going to school, etc. And mumps has a long incubation period. That is, all viruses have a long incubation period. So if someone were to ask you, what is the incubation period of mumps? All you have to think about that is a viral illness and you will say two to three weeks and you'd be right. If it's a bacterial illness, of course, it's going to be days, one to three days. So you need not be specific about these precise dates. Mumps causes enlargement of the parotid glands. Sometimes the submandibular glands. And patients present with a swollen face and pain and fever and perhaps a sore throat. And be generalized lymphadenopathy enlargement of the draining lymph nodes and sometimes difficulty with swallowing. The important thing for us is though, when you look inside the mouth, you may see that the orifice of the Stenson's duct or the parotid duct is inflamed on one side or on both sides. And that is about its sole oral manifestation. You remember of course that mumps causes meningoencephalitis, rarely, that is inflammation of the meninges and that of the brain, or orchitis, inflammation of the testes, or pancreatitis. But those things are not going to happen in your dental chair. And I'm only mentioning them to you for completeness. Mumps is protected by vaccine, vaccination program introduced by the National Health Service, the NHS, in 1988. And since its introduction, the mumps, measles, rubella vaccine, it has greatly decreased the number of kids developing mumps. The first jab is given at 13 months and a booster just before kids start school. Measles is a very serious and a highly contagious viral illness and is spread by droplet infection, by sneezing and by coughing, by sneezing and coughing in school and on the playground and on the bus going to school, etc. And because it's a viral illness, it has a long incubation period. So a couple of weeks of incubation period and you'd be right. This is a condition in which young children present and become very fretful and ill and miserable with fever and with generalized lymphadenopathy, enlargement of the draining lymph nodes and with discharging eyes and ears and what is called the macular papular rash. The important thing for us is though, when you look in the mouth, you may see things called coplic spots. These are just small salivary retention glands which become inflamed and show up as little grains of salt on the inside of the cheek opposite the molars. And the important thing about these coplic spots are that they come on before the rash. They come on before the maculopapular rash. 
So if you're a clever dentist, like your good self, and you see a child who is fretful and ill and miserable, perhaps coming down with fever and a bit of a cold, and you look inside their mouth, and you see these little grains of salt with perhaps a red halo around them, you see these coplic spots on the inside of the cheek, opposite the molars. You look at the mom and say, Mother, I think your child is coming down with measles. And you probably will be right. But it's best not to say anything and refer them to the GP because as you recall, this is a notifiable disease and the GP will have to inform the health authority because of it. And you remember, of course, apart from a miserable, fretful and an ill child covered in a rash, measles is characterized by inflammation of the ears, otitis media and that of encephalitis, inflammation of the brain and a funny thing called subacute sclerosing panencephalitis. But again, those things are not going to happen in your dental chair. And I've only mentioned them to you for completeness. Measles is protected by vaccine, vaccination program introduced by the National Health Service, the good old NHS, in the United Kingdom in 1988. The mumps, measles, rubella vaccine and since its introduction it has greatly cut down the number of children needing hospital treatment and developing measles. And I strongly advise all parents in the United Kingdom to follow the guidelines set by the National Health Service. The first jab is given at 13 months and a booster just before kids start school. German measles is a viral illness and is spread by droplet infection, by sneezing and by coughing. And because it's a viral illness, it has a long incubation period. So a couple of weeks of incubation period and you'll be right. And patients develop fever and generalized lymphadenopathy, enlargement of the draining lymph nodes. It hasn't got much of an oral manifestation. So we pass it over, except to say that there is a rash, a rash very much like the rash of measles, but is a fine maculopapular rash. And unlike the rash of measles which persists, this one clears up real quick. Three to four days. German measles of course is important as you recall if a pregnant woman has rubella because there are serious consequences affecting the fetus if the pregnant woman has German measles. Things like cataract, deafness, encephalitis etc. And therefore there is a vaccination program for young ladies leaving school because of chance of getting pregnant. German measles is protected by vaccine vaccination program introduced by the National Health Service in the United Kingdom in 1988, the mumps, measles, rubella vaccine. The first jab is given at 13 months and a booster just before kids go to school. Diphtheria? This is a very serious and a highly contagious bacterial disease, which I'm pleased to say that is almost completely disappeared because of the good work by the National Health Service. Vaccination program which started as early as 1940s. This is a very serious disease which can affect the myocardium and patients can have severe inflammation of the heart and go into serious heart failure and patients can even become temporarily paralyzed because of it. But the important thing for us is though, when you look inside the mouth, you will see membrane. Tough, thick, adherent membrane stuck at the back of the tonsils. That membrane can involve the pharynx and cause respiratory obstruction. That membrane can even involve the larynx and even the anterior part of the nose where it can just present as a nasal discharge. Diphtheria is protected by vaccine vaccination program which was introduced by the NHS in 1986. The 5 in 1 vaccine which protects against whooping cough, diphtheria, polio, influenza and of course diphtheria itself. And the first jabs are given at 2 months, 3 months and 4 months old and so on and then they have the 1 in 4 vaccine. Chickenpox 
is a highly contagious viral illness. And, it's, and most kids will pick it up at some times or other. And because it's a viral illness, it has a long incubation period. So a couple of weeks of incubation period and you'll be right. And it's spread by droplet infection, by sneezing and by coughing, by sneezing in the nursery and in school, etc. And the important thing for us though is that you will see vesicles. You will see vesicles not only on the face and on the arms, but more characteristically on the soft palate where the top gets dropped off and is therefore very diagnostic. You recall this is what is called the centripetal illness, where the maximum amount of rash is on the trunk and on the body with the sparring of the periphery. And the last one, of course, is whooping cough. This is a bit of a catch because it's a bacterial illness with a rather long incubation period. And again, it's spread by droplet infection, by sneezing and by coughing. And this is a condition in which patients have severe paroxysm of coughing and after they do that they have inspiratory obstruction. So they cough, cough, cough and go <gasps> and become cyanosed and vomit. So cough and vomit, cough and cyanosis are a feature of this disease. But the important thing for us is to, when you look inside the mouth, you may see that there is ulceration of the frenum of the tongue. And you may also see subconjunctival hemorrhages, certainly due to the strenuous effort of coughing. And whooping cough is protected by vaccine, vaccination program introduced by the NHS in 1988, a five-in-one vaccine which protects against diphtheria, whooping cough, tetanus, polio, and influenza. And is given at two months, three months, and four months, and then the booster is given as a one in four vaccine. Now this is all a bit of a mouthful, so let's go very slowly through them again. Mumps or epidemic parotitis, important complications for others, not for you, inflammation of the Stenson's duct, measles, important for us because you will see coplic spots in an ill, fretful child covered in a rash, German measles, not important for us except that there is a rash, a fine maculopapular rash which clears up quickly, diphtheria, important for us because you will see membrane, thick, adherent membrane stuck at the back of the tonsils, that membrane can involve the pharynx and the larynx and even the anterior part of the nose. Chicken pox, important for us because you will see vesicles. Vesicles not only on the face and on the trunk, but more characteristically on the soft palate where the top gets rubbed off and is very diagnostic. And whooping cough, important for us because you will see that there is ulceration of the frenum of the tongue, certainly due to strenuous effort of coughing and that of subconjunctival hemorrhages.